Welcome to Electron Online and now let's take a look, a closer look at how we analyze a two-state system and calculate the number of microstates can exist depending upon how many will be in one state versus the other state. For example, how many of the objects, I should say, should be in one state or the other state. So let's say we start off with a simple system where the total number of objects is equal to 10 and each object can be in one or the other state, one or two, so to speak. So here we have a distribution that shows us how the number of microstates will exist depending upon how many of the objects will be in one state versus the other state and the number of microstates will be a maximum when the number of objects in each of the two states is equal to one another when n1 is equal to n2 where n1 represents the number of objects in state 1 and n2 represents the number of objects in state 2 remember that n1 plus n2 is equal to the total number of objects in this case it's equal to 10 and again we're dealing with a two-state system later on we'll do some videos with a multi-state system but start out with a simple system also we want to know what the general shape looks like this is what the general shape looks like but the width of this shape will depend upon the value for n however number of states however number of objects there are when the number of objects increase to a large number it tends to become narrower if the a number of objects in the, in the, in the population uh, decreases, it tends to kind of widen. And what we're going to do is find out where our, what our maximum number of microstates is and how much the number will deviate from the maximum when we're 10% of the point where n1 equals n2. For example, where n1 will be 60% of the total and n2 will be 40% of the total, what is the value of the, or what is the number of microstates that exist for that particular case and then see how that changes when n becomes a larger and larger number. So we'll start off with n equals 10. Notice that for the number of microstates we can say that's equal to n divided by n like this in this condition which means it's n factorial divided by n1 factorial divided by n minus n1 factorial. We're going to do that for these various values and of course since n is a fairly small number, 10 factorial, we can do it on a calculator and we don't need Stirling's approximation. So let's find w sub max, so the maximum number of uh, microstates, so this is equal to n would be, that would be 10 factorial divided by n1 would be 5 factorial and n minus n1 which is n2 would also be 5 factorial. So this is equal to 10 factorial divided by fact, 5 factorial is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 divided by 5 factorial which is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now let's simplify that a little bit before we calculate it. So 5 goes into 10 2 times 2 goes into 2 1 time, 4 goes into 8 2 times, 3 goes into 9 3 times. And it looks like that's as simple as it's going to get. Now let's get a calculator and calculate out the rest. So that would be 42 times 6, 42 times 6, which is equal to 252. So the maximum number of microstates when there's an equal number of objects in both states is equal to 252. So now let's see what it is for n1 equals 4. And of course, the number for n1 equals 4 will be the same as n1 equals 6 because there's a perfect symmetry there. So now calculating the case where n1 is equal to 4. So we have w, the number of microstates, is equal to 10 factorial divided by 4 factorial times 6 factorial. So 10 divided by 6 factorial, that would be equal to 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. Divide that by 4 factorial, which is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. All right, so we have 8 divided by 4 times 2, which is 8. So that goes to 1, and these go to 1. 9 divided by 3 is equal to 3. So that's 30 times 7. That would be equal to 210. All right, so that's 210 microstates here and 210 microstates there. So we keep doing that. Now we go for w, means the number of microstates when n sub 1 is equal to, so this would be n sub 1 equals to 4, this is n sub 1 is equal to 3, that would be 10 factorial divided by 3 factorial times 7 factorial, so this is equal to 10 factorial divided by 7 factorial is 10 times 9 times 8 divided by 3 factorial which is 3 times 2 times 1, and so 8 divided by 2 is 4, 9 divided by 3 is 3, that's 12 times 10, which is 120. So there's 120 microstates when we have a population of 3 in the 
and in the first condition, so that'll be 120 right here. All right, doing this again for n equals n1 equals 2. So we have the number of microstates is equal to 10 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 8 factorial. So this would be 10 times 9 divided by 2 times 1. And so that would be 1 and 5, that would be 45. So there's 45 microstates in that case, 45 and 45. All right, a couple more. So we have, whoop, stepping on the flag here, n1 equals 1. So the number of microstates is 10 factorial divided by 1 factorial times 9 factorial, which is equal to 10. And all right, so we write 10 and 10. And finally, when we have n sub 1 is equal to 0, which means all the objects are in the second state. So the number of microstates in that case would be 10 factorial divided by 0 factorial times 10 factorial, which is equal to 1 by definition. So we have 1 and 1. So that's the distribution curve. Now, what we wanted to do is go 10% out from the maximum value. So of course, 10% out from uh, omega max or the maximum number of microstates, that would be right here or right uh, or right here, right? That's 10% off. So what is the ratio of 210 divided by 254? So 210 divided by 254 is equal to 210 divided by 254. That is 0 0.827, which is equal to 82.7% of the maximum number of microstates. So that's why that's a fairly wide distribution. At this point, 10% away from the central maximum, we're still at 82.7% of the maximum number of microstates. And that's because n is a small number, so we have kind of a much wider distribution. What we should see when we do the, the case again for n equals 50 or n equals 100 or 1000, that that will become much narrower what we'll, we'll see, however, that at the top this becomes flat, so there's a kind of a, it really doesn't change much initially until the numbers become disparate between n1 and n2, and then begins to drop off rather quickly. So we'll see what that looks like when we have populations of much larger than 10, let's say 50, 100, 1000, and so forth, and we'll do some examples like that as well. So that's a general analysis of what that distribution looks like for the number of microstates in a two-state system with, in this case, a population of 10 items. So, so let's say 10 coins being flipped. They could be heads or tails as an example.